This is from one of our locals VIPs named Amy. She said, what is your theory on why so many middle-aged, educated white women are beholden to leftist ideology? That's a good question. Um, I think two reasons. One is, um, I think you, you do have to look at marital status. Um, whether divorced, separated, never married, um, women in those categories, myself a major exception, um, tends to be <laughs> very liberal. And I think that's because they look to the government to be their husbands. Um, it's very useful having a man around. Um, <laughs> I, I like it myself. Um, so... So first, you have to exclude that whole group. And then I don't think they're, and I could be wrong, I don't think they're that different from men. Um, the, ones, the, one, the ones who are married and still left-wing loons, um, sorry, I'm saying um too much. A uh, couple of reasons. One is women, I mean, there are all kinds of s studies on this. Um, it's in uh, Charles Murray's book, Human Diversity. Women have a tendency to prefer to get along uh, in all these polls, college kids, and even beyond that, um, there'll be a question, is it more important to tell the truth or to go along with the crowd? And men will overwhelmingly say, tell the truth, and women will overwhelmingly say, go along with the crowd. So part of it is they, they just want to, you know, get along, go along to get along, whatever the expression is. Um, and also the ones that probably your 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 viewer is referring to, uh, they probably went to you know some fancy school like Smith or Wellesley, <laughs> so they're as brainwashed as a recent college graduate. <laughs> I I think too. This is something interesting I've noticed about the younger generation. This wasn't even true. Like I'm in the millennial generation, but women in Gen Z, we make fun of them because they wear ugly clothes and they don't, they don't wear a lot of makeup. And they, I don't know, I cannot get on board with Gen Z style all the time as much as I try. But they are realizing something for the first time that even millennials and Gen X didn't recognize. And that is all the promises of feminism don't actually make women happy. Um, and so maybe, maybe what she's talking about, these middle-aged, educated white women are still beholden just to the narratives of feminism, that they fell prey to that from their indoctrination in college. I don't know. Um, one more question from locals. And I, I, I actually don't even know if the premise of this question is true. You can tell me if it is or not. This question <laughs> says, um, Anne's dad was an FBI agent. So I want to ask how she feels about what's happening at the FBI today. Is that true? Was your dad an FBI agent or is this question off? No, it went for a few years, not as long as I was alive, but when he got out of law school, um, it was almost like having a I'm a judicial clerkship. When he got out of law school, uh, he was an FBI agent. He was a red hunter. Uh, I'm, I, that's why I dedicated my book, Treason to Him. That's the one that redeems Joe McCarthy, tells the truth about Joe McCarthy, let me put it that way. Anyway, he was involved in a lot of the, the red hunting cases. Uh, and then that wasn't enough money to, <laughs> to raise a family of, of five. Um, so he became a corporate lawyer. I mean, he was a lawyer, but he switched career paths. And yes, I mean, it's heartbreaking. I, I, I still, I, there's, there, President DeSantis is going to have a lot on his plate because I think the FBI is a very <laughs> important institution. Lots of things, lots of um, things need to be cleared out. Um, and yeah, it's heartbreaking what's happened to the FBI. I suspect, and I hope I'm right, I don't know. I think it's mostly coming from headquarters in Washington. Um, I'll give you one story about that that you, you may not remember. Um, after the 9-11 attack, uh, we got news about two of the um, two of the terrorists had been taking flying lessons in Arizona. Uh, and it turns out there was a local FBI agent who happened to notice, huh, that's weird. There are a lot of Arabs taking flying lessons in our country. And so he notifies FBI headquarters in Washington, D.C., uh, I believe notifies um, the terrorism unit in New York City. This is before 9-11. And 
And FBI headquarters in Washington, D.C. says, leave it alone. It looks like racial profiling. And two of the hijackers came out of the flight school he was looking at. So thank you, FBI. Good work. <laughs> uh, uh, that's heartbreaking, isn't it? Literally mm -hmm. heartbreaking that political correctness and wokeness got in the way of actually protecting our homeland. And the worst attack that we've suffered on mainland United States. Terrible. Ann Coulter, you are a delight to talk to. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Everybody listening, go to annecoulter.substack.com. She just published a fiery piece over there that I know you're going to like. Also, make sure to pick up her book, Adios America, because you're going to read about exactly what's happening before our very eyes, unfortunately, with this terrible border crisis. Ann, thanks for joining me. Thank you. Anytime, Liz. Okay, guys, don't forget to subscribe to Anne's Substack. It's annecoulter.substack.com. Love her or hate her, she is a firecracker. And if I am correct, I would guess that you were mesmerized the entire time, just as I was, even on the points that we don't necessarily agree. I don't agree with her on everything. I don't disagree with her on everything. She's just an interesting person to listen to. My biggest takeaway, the part that is sticking in my head, um, that was sticking in my head the entire time, actually, and I'm still thinking about is... The reason she says that Donald Trump was elected. Now, you and I might sit here and think, okay, Donald Trump was elected in 2016 because he appealed to the forgotten man. And in, in that case, in 2015 and 2016, the forgotten man was white working class, typically in the Midwest. And that's true. I think that that's, that's accurate. And the, the data, the voting data um, show that that's accurate. But her contention, Anne's contention, is that the way that Donald Trump convinced those individuals, white working class, maybe lower income Americans, that he really was going to fight for them was by securing the border, by campaigning on build the wall. So maybe in some cases, the neighborhoods of, uh, of these individuals um, that they didn't have illegal immigrants bust into their neighborhoods, or maybe it was you know, com competition for jobs, that there wasn't cheap labor that was excluding American citizens from, from finding employment because it would be the white working class who were excluded from employment if companies and corporations, just employers in general, are hiring illegal labor that they're paying, you know, a wage that's, that's not comparable to what an American citizen would want to make for that same work. That's the one thing she said that is sticking in my mind. Many interesting things, but this, it's, it's interesting to think about. It's interesting to think about because she's right. In 2020, nobody was talking about the border. It, it seemed that Trump deliberately avoided the border because he knew that the left was going to try to um, weaponize the idea that, you know, the, the build the wall thing didn't turn out the way that he had campaigned on it exactly in 2016. For a lot of reasons, not all reasons that were his fault directly, some reasons that he, he could have done better on. But regardless, the left would have tried to use that as a cudgel against him. Hi guys, it's Liz Wheeler. Don't forget to watch my show, The Liz Wheeler Show, every night at 7 p.m. on The First TV. You can download the free First TV app or you can visit thefirsttv.com slash Liz and start watching today.